All right, today I want to talk about average and instantaneous rates of change for chemical reactions. Now I've created this graph of concentration versus time for a chemical reaction that has NO reacting with O2 to make N2O5. The NO is the darkest line here, the N2O5 is the lightest, and O2 is in between. Hopefully that has come out for you. But we're here to talk about average and instantaneous rates of change. You can already tell that the NO is disappearing, the O2 is also disappearing, and the N2O5 is appearing because that's how chemical reactions are supposed to work. But the average rate of consumption of NO over the first two seconds involves finding the slope between those two points. And when I say those two points, I mean time equals zero and time equals two. You'll notice at time zero, the NO concentration is 16 moles per liter. And at two seconds, the concentration is about 10 moles per liter. So the rate of a chemical reaction, the average rate of consumption of NO in that case, is going to be C2 minus C1 over T2 minus T1, which should remind you of the slope of a line, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Here we can just fill in the concentrations and times. That's 10 minus 16 and 2 minus 0 because it was 10 moles per liter at 2 seconds and 16 moles per liter at 0 seconds. I end up with negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3 moles per liter, that's the change in concentration, per second. The units here for rate will always be moles per liter per second or whatever your concentration unit is over whatever your time unit is. Some teachers will write that as moles over liters seconds. These are the same thing. Now, the average rate of consumption of a chemical or production, I suppose, if it's a product, is the slope of the secant or the line connecting those two points. The instantaneous rate of consumption or production is the slope of a tangent line. Now, if you're not like the best at math, a tangent line is one that just barely grazes the curve at that point. So it's that line's supposed to have the same slope that the curve has at exactly that point. Here it would be too steep, here it would be too shallow, here it would be just right. Now, you can't solve for the slope of a tangent with an equation unless you know calculus, but here we're just going to draw a line, a tangent line, that barely grazes the curve at two seconds, because that's when I was asked for the instantaneous rate of consumption. Now we just need the slope of that line. I noticed there's a point, a nice point there, and there's a nice point here. That was a major coincidence, but you just have to find two points that are on the line and do the, the rate C2 minus C1 over T2 minus T1 again. Even though the points you're using are not on the curve, they're on the tangent line. That's what makes it an instantaneous rate of consumption. So here I have four moles per liter at seven seconds and 12 moles per liter at zero seconds. That gives me negative eight over seven. That's negative 1.143 approximately moles per liter per second. Now you'll notice the actual rate of consumption at two seconds is less than the average from zero to two. The reason for that is that chemical reactions often go fastest at the beginning and then they start to slow down. So on average in this area, it was going down three moles per liter per second. But by the time you actually got to two, it had, it had slowed all the way down to minus 1.1 moles per liter per second. You'll notice that these rates are negative because these are consumptions. I have noticed some teachers will say that the rate of consumption is positive three moles per liter per second because consumption implies the negative. You'll have to see what your teacher prefers on your own. Cool? Cool. Now, you can also do this from tables and 
just so you know that this table I invented to correspond to this chart, which I lifted out of an old IB test. But again, the average rate of reaction from five seconds to 25 seconds is C2 minus C1 over T2 minus T1. Now you can pick that from five seconds here to 25 seconds there and draw a secant line, or you can look at it in the chart. At 25 seconds, I was at 0 0.4 moles per liter. At five seconds, I was at 1.6. That was at 25 down to five. So I end up with negative 0 0.8 moles per liter per 20 seconds. That gives me negative point, negative 0.8 divided by 20. That's uh, negative 0 0.04 moles per liter per second. I'm just demonstrating that you can do this from a table just like you can from a graph. And the instantaneous rate of reaction at 25 seconds, you're probably gonna have to draw a tangent line at 25, one that has about the same slope as the curve itself. And then you gotta find some nice points that you can plug into the equation. Uh, I'm gonna use that point and this point. I like picking my points pretty far apart. Instantaneous rate of reaction at 25 seconds is C2 minus C1 over T2 minus T1. Concentration two is uh, 0 0.08, it looks like. Concentration one is 1.12. T2 was 35, T1 was zero. I'll do this on the calculator. That's negative 0 0.08. Nope, positive 0 0.08 minus 1.12 is that divided by 35. And I end up with negative 0 0.0297 moles per liter per second. Again, average rates of change are the slopes of the secants and instantaneous rates of change are the slopes of the tangents. This is a summary sheet that I've made for you. Average rate of reaction is how fast the reaction is proceeding within a certain time frame, like over the first two seconds. That's t equals zero up to t equals two. From five seconds to 25 seconds is even more obvious. I've been using this formula over and over again, and the word was secant for the slope between two points. Instantaneous rate of reaction is how fast the reaction is going at an exact moment, like at t equals two only, or at t equals zero only. It's the same formula, but you're using two points on the line, not on the curve of the actual data that you use. And finally, if you know calculus, you could always just take the derivative of concentration with respect to time. That will give you the instantaneous rate. But I'm assuming you guys may not have that calculus background, which is why I did it the long way. Best of luck.